Salam Nerds is brought to you by HalalShirts.com, where you can find fun novelty gifts for your Muslim friends. While you're at it, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. It's 30, so we should have enough time. We don't record over 40. All right, cool. All right, Jazz, uh, want me to start the introduction? All right, cool. All right. Yo, 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 Salam Nerds. It's your boy, Neves, a.k.a. Watch with Neves, and I'm here with my co-host, Jazz, a.k.a. The Jazz Train. The Jazz what Train. Up, Jazz? Oh, you know, we got wow. a lot of trains in this episode, so we had to bring it back. Bro, <laughs> do not break my heart, because the moment they talked about those blood trains, ooh. Oh, man. We, <laughs> we had a rough episode last week where we got into the partition. Uh, this week, we might have to dive back in, because it's still a little bit there, but before we do that, we have a very, very special guest, um, probably, you know, a pretty, pretty distinguished guest. You know, we've never had a, um, what do you call it? We never had a president on our show before. Mm, so we have what? the, yeah, we have the vice president of representation and inclusion strategies of a small company. You might have heard of them called Disney. <laughs> Welcome, Maria. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Thank you so much for being on your on our show. We're so excited. We were gonna. I was about to say on your show because I feel like Disney owns everything. It's only <laughs> a matter of time. Disney owns us. <laughs> I'll make sure to let our team know that you guys exist, and you know they'll, they'll probably be in touch. I'm just kidding, but um, yeah. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for having me. I appreciate it. No, thank you yeah, for being on. Awesome. I mean, this is amazing. This is really cool to us for us because we, you know, diversity and inclusion is the main thing that we talk about on our show. Uh, we know there aren't a lot of voices like ours out there. Uh, so, you know, we're like, you know, if something doesn't exist, why don't you create it? And that's what we and Jazz did. We decided to create something that will give voices to people who look like us because there's not a lot of us. And then when a show like Miss Marvel came around, um, People were looking for voices that look like us to talk about it. And luckily we were there and they found us and it's been a wild ride and we really enjoyed it. So thank you so much for all the work that you do. Oh yeah, no, of course. I'm, uh, it's really just a labor of love. It's amazing to be able to do something. Um, I have a long kind of history in the culture change world. Um, and this is the first time that I've really been able to work on a show on a story that I feel like is really representative of my history and my culture and my family and my faith, um, which is really important to me. And so it was really um, just incredibly healing and um, important to me to be able to work on the show. So I'm glad other people are feeling the same way. Healing is the right word yeah. because I felt is so many word. emotions, <laughs> like just watching the show, just watching all the talking about it. Like it, it's, it feels good. It does. It, it feels good to have like your feelings put into words and into actions on TV and see it. It's, it's a different experience. Mm -hmm. And one that I never thought we'd see, we, we, it's really cool that Disney is, you know, doing this labor of love as, as you said and, and putting it together so uh tell us a little bit about your history so you talked about your history and and how it relates to miss marvel where are you from uh you know where, where did you grow up uh you know how do you get into wh what you're doing now because it could not have been an easy task yeah i mean it's really it's really fate like it's not one of those things that you can game yourself into a role um especially it's like the first you know visibly muslim executive in hollywood like that's not something that was you know on my on my game plan of things to do <laughs> with my life um but uh yeah my background so my family is south asian um we are gujarati we um left india in the late 1800s so we were actually not in the region when partition happened somewhat i will say cause mm -hmm. i think that whole region was shaken by partition anyway they were in sure. burma um and then my my mom's side of the family moved to bangladesh um or at that time what was known as east pakistan which then went through a revolution and then they moved to Karachi. So right. she grew up in Pakistan and uh, my dad's side of the family um, after the revolution in Burma moved to England. So he grew up in England and I was born in England um, mm. and then we moved here to Southern California when I was um, six months old. So I grew up in Southern California my whole life. Um, but what was great about being part of kind of diaspora was that my family um, and, you know, being Daisy, our, our close family means all of my... <laughs> first cousins and everything were between South Africa, Dubai, and England. And so I spent a lot of time abroad, including going to places like Pakistan and India, um, which was really formative for me, especially growing up. Um, 
and yeah, and then grew up in Southern California. So yeah. Wow, that's really cool. That's that's a little that's like a journey, man. You just went from one place to another. There's a little bit of history ev- from everywhere with you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm impressed they had it recorded because like a lot of our history, sometimes kind of just forget about these little stops along the way. And it was like, oh, we came yeah. started here and we ended up here. But it's cool that you had the like the timeline from like the 1800s, like you said. That's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Because like I know my timeline is somewhere in uh, Afghanistan, but it's not like tracked as as well as some of these other places uh but it's really really cool how how that happens um but speaking of like you know your history and your journey like you've definitely got some like uh fellows and you've had an amazing <laughs> career and you worked in some really cool places uh, tell us a little bit about yeah, that. yeah definitely i can kind of share my background so i um even though i grew up in kind of southern california i was never even interested in working in hollywood i never saw anyone that looked like me except as you know a yeah. villain or as a oppressed woman. So I never thought about working in the industry. Um, I kind of had two twin things that I loved. The first was uh, creative writing, fiction, um, books, um, storytelling, just overall. I love the type of person that will go and sit in a theater by myself and watch a movie. I love that. Um, And so for me, Mm -hmm. um, I was an English major. And then the other thing that I loved was sociology because growing up as a Muslim after 9-11, being impacted by kind of how the story of who I was and who my community was was changed overnight. And so as a young person, just dealing with the bullying, dealing with the discrimination, dealing with all of the things Mm. that came with that, you know, and I had started wearing hijab when I was in seventh grade. And so I just experiencing all of that, I was actually the first person in my family to wear hijab and then 9-11 happened and my parents were like, this child, (laughs) I was like, no. <laughs> um, but I remember having a conversation with my dad that I thought was really meaningful. So he grew up in a um, kind of poor neighborhood in England. Um, they were mm-hmm. immigrants and they had actually been really wealthy in Burma, but when they had to flee the revolution, they had to leave everything there. And so um, my right. grandmother actually raised eight kids um, in England, which is amazing. Wow. Yeah, like my grandfather died. Masha. Yeah, my grandfather died pretty young. And so she was like a single mom raising eight kids, which is amazing. She was a really strong matriarch. Wow. And so my dad, I remember when 9-11 happened, he sat me and my sister down and he said, look, like you can make the choices that you want to make in terms of, you know, how you represent yourself. But he said, if you're going to um, compromise on what you believe in because of other people, you'll be compromising for the rest of your life because of how other people perceive mm. you. And so for me as a young person, having that conversation with him has been kind of a North star for me in the sense of like really being clear with myself about what do I believe is important? What are my principles? What are my values, right? So um, I studied English and sociology, graduated, um, worked as a community organizer. Some of, some people probably know what organizing oh. is from President Obama. Yes, yeah, so I was organizing in primarily yeah. low-income communities of color, both um, in California as well as nationally. Um, and then worked in the social sector. So I basically worked in philanthropy. I worked, worked in social impact. I worked in international development a little bit. And then I went to USC for my graduate school. And in graduate school, I decided um, uh, I, I worked for a strategy consulting firm. And so when I left school, when I, when I graduated, I got recruited into a philanthropic organization as a billion dollar foundation here in Los Angeles, working for the executive vice president. And basically, uh, when I got recruited, I knew it wasn't the right job. So I was sitting behind a desk, mm. looking at a computer, like feeling like I had mm-hmm. spent like the last six, seven years, like really trying to figure out how to make a difference in the world, trying to figure out like how to make the world better. Because for me, that was like really my driving force because, you know, especially growing up with yeah. family all over the world. It was really important to try to figure that out and seeing, you know, I saw a lot of poverty. I saw a lot of um, the ways that being American meant that you had a lot of access um, to things that people overseas don't. Um, and so it's really important to me. Sorry, I know this answer is going really long, but it's really important no, to me. No, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, no, it's great. I, I, I'm just I am, captured. I, I am like, <laughs> yeah, same. Like, first of all, you're speaking our language because, like, me and Jazz are also people who work behind the desk. And, you know, our way of, like, giving back isn't as great as yours. We started a podcast. You became a very <laughs> famous <laughs> difference between us and no. you. But, 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 but Jazz is actually very involved in, in like, politics and Senate. He, he is definitely 
he is definitely somebody who, you know, one of these days, this this podcast is probably going to bite him in the butt because he's going to become like some. I have famous. no regrets with this podcast. I said what I said. All right. <laughs> Let's do this. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no. No, Jazz is very involved. So this is really cool for us. We mm-hmm. love hearing awesome. this. Please continue. Like. <laughs> so basically, I. Um, yeah. So, you know, I was really passionate about trying to figure out how to make the world better, right? And uh, sitting behind a desk, as you guys mentioned, and hating my life. I was literally watching The West Wing while I was, like, working on Excel sheets and just, like, <laughs> hating myself. And uh, and I decided to leave my job. And it was one of those places that you don't leave because, you know, it's a really Ooh. fancy place. You know, you get, like all the things. And I was like, no, I really, this is not it for me. And so I decided to leave and I didn't have another job lined up. And I was, and I decided to start my own company. And that actually ties back to my background as Gujarati. My family um, and my community is really known for being business people. And so I was at my family's Thanksgiving dinner and uh, talking with my cousins and then they were like, you need to start your own company. And I was like, in only in my family, (laughs) would somebody be like, start your own business. (laughs) Like, dude, that's the... You you had... you probably had like 80 cousins there oh, in general. That's that like that's Thanksgiving how they roll. party is 100 people every year. Um, but I'm not even joking. That's not even an exaggeration. <laughs> but uh, it was really funny because I was like, um, yeah, only in my family would it be seen as like the less risky thing to do is just start your own business. Like that's logical. Thing. <laughs> so I, yeah. I decided to start my own consulting firm. And it was really meant to be a consulting firm that um, worked with nonprofits and civic institutions that serve low income communities of color. So that was my goal. I was going to do strategy and impact consulting. That was what my career was in, all of that. What ended up happening was that when I had kind of set up um, the company, one of my first clients, um, I I was a philanthropic organization that asked me to go to a conference. And at the conference, I met the former VP who actually wasn't at Disney at the time. She was at Google, but she was transitioning to uh, to Mm -hmm. Disney. And basically, she, uh, me and her were the youngest people there. Uh, she had some cool glasses on. I think I had a, like mm-hmm. a cool outfit on. We looked at each other across the room. We're like, we're going to be friends because everybody else here is boring. And, uh, <laughs> and so we, That's how it happens. <laughs> we decided to go grab a coffee. And uh, she told me she was transitioning to this VP role at Disney and um, that the first movie she was going to be working on was Aladdin. So she said, hey, do you mind just as oh. a friend mm. advising me on the side? And I said, of course, like, it's really important to make sure that Disney gets Aladdin right. So I, I'll definitely be there to help you. Yeah. And I was not thinking about it from a professional standpoint. I was really just thinking about it from a community standpoint, right, as a community member. Um, mm-hmm. And I had started my company and I was really clear on what my company was going to be doing, right? Which was, I told myself, you're going to be poor for your whole life, mm-hmm. but you're going to do what you hey. believe in, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And so um, yeah. anyway, long story short, um, she ended up pulling me into Aladdin um, and we ended up becoming the lead consultants over two and a half years. And through that work, we ended up consulting on a whole host of film and television projects all over the industry. So that's my consulting firm called wow. Sala. Yeah. Um, which comes from um, the word uh, uh, in the Quran. Uh, like, you know, that's like the kind of mm. famous phrase, but it means connection. It's where Salah comes from also. And my goal with my company had always been to connect people, ideas and resources. Yeah, and so that just blew me away. That's such a great name. I was like, "That's such a clever thank name." You, I love you. that. I should talk to you guys all the time. You're great for the ego, but um, just <laughs> um, and so I started that company, and we started advising on a ton of film and television projects at Disney, Netflix, Sony, etc. Yeah, with um, electronic uh, EA, like in video games publishing etc so just started doing that work and as we were doing that um one of my other clients was an actress um named america ferrera uh as well as an actor named wilmer balderrama i might have heard she sounds familiar (laughs) wilmer was in that 70s show she was in sisterhood of the traveling pants and ugly betty yeah and uh and yeah, Superstore. and Superstore. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was. Yeah, I, I love I that show. Superstore a lot, a lot because there was a lot because uh, while well, I was working with her, so we ended up creating a nonprofit together along with her husband Ryan Pierce Williams. We started Harness, um, which I then became the executive director of. So for the last basically three years, I was a crazy person who was um, running a company and a nonprofit, <laughs> and uh, 
board of like another <laughs> chair, board chair of another nonprofit and just basically exhausted all the time. Um, and so that was my life um, until January of last year. Um, and uh, the, the nonprofit we had started was really uh, Harness. What it did was it was really about changing the perception of marginalized communities and popular culture. So we did a tremendous amount of work um, with C-suite executives in, in Hollywood, but also lots of work with artists directly, lot, um, probably worked with almost every major artist in the world, um, especially American artists in the world, um, around social justice issues and um, did a lot of work. Um, so built that into a $4 million nonprofit with a staff of 10, really did that. So that was kind of my last few years was that company and that nonprofit. And then in January of last year, I was actually on the set of Miss Marvel in Atlanta. And uh, you know, while I was there, my friend um, who was the VP, told me she was leaving the, her job to go run for office. And she said, you should consider my role. And I said, no. <laughs> yeah. Because I was crazy. like, I had put so much blood, sweat, and tears into building those two institutions. They'd finally gotten to a place yeah. of stability, you know, built out really great teams. I felt really proud of everything. And then to like, you know, be like, all right, now at this moment, I'm going to have to um, look at a completely new industry. I've never worked uh, in corporate America and for a a VP role like this, I was like, no, mm -hmm. I a little bit of imposter syndrome for sure. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Jazz knows mm -hmm. about that. I tell Jazz every day that like we're gonna get this is this is the episode where we get canceled. This is the episode that we're gonna flop. Like I have so much. He does not me. I actually know about his imposter syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cat, right? It doesn't matter. Like if there's a line in front of me, I'm still gonna be the best cat there is, right? I'm the peak, the apex, <laughs> even though it's a little kitten. <laughs> That's the mindset you gotta have, all right? Amazing. Man. No, I won't. I won't. I won't even get the yearly fee for our <laughs> podcast because, like, I don't know if we're gonna last the whole year. <laughs> like, Believe in yourself. <laughs> It'll. You, that's the thing. That's the amazing thing about risk, right? Is like when you take a risk, um, you open the door for all these things that could happen. If you hadn't started this podcast, I would have never met you. You would have never gotten invited yeah, yeah. to that Miss Marvel premiere. Like, you know what I mean? All the things that like kind of came out of um, just taking an opportunity, taking mm -hmm. a risk, and learning. I think it's so important, and I think that's one of the things i always tell young people too is like be like don't be afraid to take a risk our culture tends to be pretty conservative when it comes to risk and i think it's really important to like mm. break out of the box a little bit and try different things and a lot of times the things you learn are more important than if you're successful or not because they help the biggest investment you can make is in yourself yeah. you know what i mean and then that's where you get mm -hmm. to where you need to go so yeah but anyway end of my story very long story was that um she eventually convinced me to talk to a recruiter um, I talked to a recruiter and they, you know, uh, interviewed me and decided to offer me the job. So, yeah. That's, that's awesome. No, I, I'm glad that you brought up that, that imposter syndrome stuff because I, I do feel the way, but I feel like for me, if I'm fighting for something that's like not for me, for somebody yeah. else, like I don't care. I will go at it because that's how we met. Because I sent out like a hundred emails to a bunch of people. Because like <laughs> you know, I'm from Jersey. Like I work in Jersey City, and I was like, I know that people can't afford Disney Plus. I know people can't see this, and I was like, I need to get this show in front of people somehow. And because like there is like wealth disparity, right? They're, like I know what it's like. Like you're worried about putting food on the table. You're not going to buy disney plus to watch one show but it's such an important yeah. show that people need to see this and uh, th that's how we met it was pure dumb luck but you know when, when i fight for somebody else i'm a completely different animal the imposter syndrome <laughs> goes away because yeah. it's the, the, the thing is bigger than me uh, yeah so yeah it's crazy how i we think met. um but one of the things that i would say is to that is that when you can start to see also that you doing well helps your community that also helped me get past some of my imposter syndrome, right? Because for me, like being a hijabi Muslim woman, mm. right, in this industry that is often, if not always misrepresented me, right, of, and people that look like me, I have mm -hmm. to understand that I myself am bigger than oh, just yeah. what I think. Do you know what I mean? Like I stand for a lot more people who yeah. are not in the rooms, who are not in the conversations that I'm in. So it's really important that I'm doing the best that I can, that I stay true to my principles and values and that I'm I'm excellent in what I do, you know? So that way I can, because I'm representing millions of people who don't have a voice. So, yeah. Very true, very true. Well, I am glad that you are in this seat because if Miss Marvel is any indication of the job that you're oh doing. Oh my God. Like, fantastic, Ooh. fantastic.
Well, speaking of that, let's get into it, man. Let's start the <laughs> recap because there's so much stuff that we have to talk about. Um, let's start off with just the beginning where you see like the documentary style of the title of like uh, the Marvel yeah. screen. like, And then like playing like old school, like, you know, uh, Bollywood songs from the 40s on the backdrop, uh, backdrop of that. Man, who thought we would see that, right? And then you see like all of the Miss Marvel title cards in like, the, not just like different languages, but different mm -hmm. dialects, right? There were like Gujarati people who were like, oh my God, I recognize this. Punjabi people, like Urdu, Hindi, everybody. Like it was all over my Twitter. People like, this is a show about a, you know, a Pakistani girl from New Jersey, but they have through music and like other ways, they have tried to sprinkle a little representation, a little bit of South Asian unity for everybody. And I yeah. love that. I thought the that was amazing. No, was no, you? no. <laughs> We we definitely help <laughs> advise. Um, so I, I when I started on the show, I was a cultural advisor, and by the time I ended, I was an executive. So it's pr pretty funny because um, I got to play with it from lots of different angles, right? But what I will say is. Um, Mm. The creative team was so incredible on this. And um, Sana Amanat really gets the credit as the creator of Miss Marvel, who, you know, then became the creative executive on the show. She, mm. like, worked on the music. She worked on the costume. She worked, like, every aspect. This woman did not sleep for basically eight years <laughs> from bringing the character to life to get, bringing her to the, to the screen, right? Like, she put so much thought into making sure that the right people were in yeah. the set. Um, we're on the creative team, you know, and on set to make sure that the representation happened. And I know it's never perfect, and I know mm. there's criticism, but we really, really tried um, to thread the needle. And like with partition, for example, right, which is an important thing that we're talking about, um, like yeah. really trying to figure out how to do that sensitively. I mean, that's huge. It's important. It's really. Oh, yeah. I've had so many people like, like reach out to me, like we had no idea partition happened. We had no idea it was this bloody. We had no idea X, Y, and Z. And I'm like. Yeah, it happened. And like, why didn't these use in school? I'm like, well, you know, quite frankly, South Asia is one chapter in our world history book, and most of the rest of it's Europe. So this is what happens. This is why we need yeah. to tell stories. And so I think more people are learning about it. And if it <laughs> means anything, like, I've had so many friends just keep asking more and more questions that I've had to research more about partition myself. Like, I don't know everything either. And I'm just like, oh, snap, I got to yeah. learn. I just got off a meeting with one of my coworkers. Um, we were in a pretty meeting with one of the presidents of the studio, and uh, my coworker was saying she's she's um, Hindu Indian, but she's married to a Hindu from Pakistan, actually from Karachi, and so her her daughter mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. had, oh, is wow. Pakistani, right? And her grandparents are Pakistani. Her her father's Pakistani. And right. so today on the way home or on the way to camp, uh, her 11 year old daughter asked her, she, she said, Hey, do Nana Nani or do Dada Dadi also have a partition story to her mom? Oh my God. Yeah. So can you imagine? Mm. And she was like, oh, yeah. And my wow. co was like, my heart exploded. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, man. It's a, it's a lot of people. I know a lot of people who are young South Asian girls, just like in college. And they're like, I want to learn about this. They're downloading books on there. They're getting audibles on it. They want to learn. And for the longest time, we've been so like not in touch with our culture because it wasn't seemed cool. It wasn't something yeah. that was trendy. Uh, and you know, everyone has a little bit of internalized racism, just like Kamala Khan did, right? And you you put this off, and it's such a good turning point for a lot of us. And like the momentum is so important. And that's why the podcast and the TikToks are so important to me. Cause I go through every cultural reference in the show for people, not just so that people who are not South Asian can understand the show, but also so that like we who are South Asian mm -hmm. can be celebrated. This is part of our culture. It needs to be celebrated. Right. Uh, people didn't know why, how kites are so important to Pakistan. Like we had a whole thing about kites and then they got outlawed. It's a whole history <laughs> just about kites. Just because there was one yeah. scene about kites they put on there. Right. Um, so it's really, really cool. I really love it. But one of the things that like, I think blow everybody away. This episode is Mavish and Fawad Khan. Like, yo, MCU really gave <laughs> us the hottest couple of all time, and they're Pakistani, Facts. and that is the coolest thing Facts. ever. I love it. I love oh, it. I know. We were like, there's so it's uh, like every time I see Mavish on the screen, I'm like, 
Hollywood needs to be at her door, <laughs> at giving her tons and tons of roles because she needs to be in everything. That woman could play Batman and be the perfect role for it. Like I swear, she's so good looking and she's yeah, such a great think, actress. Um, like amazing. I was just talking to my mom about that. She was like, "Good, I like the casting on that." And I was like, "Okay, mom." She has a lot of thoughts on like the representation and making sure like Pakistan looks the best. Um, but what I have to say, oh, of course, what I have to say is <laughs> yeah. like the. Um, what I love about it is kind of the like really like romantic atmosphere uh, with like the roses and the kind of like, it's just really beautiful and the storytelling and it feels yeah. very culturally authentic. I think like our cultures are very romantic actually. And I think that it's um, one of the things that people don't know yeah. actually about South Asian culture, right? It's like, it's very much about like love stories oh, and song yeah. and dance and color and like, you know, beautiful florals and all these things. And I think like, I felt like the love story felt really, really authentic. So, yeah. I thought it was great. And the Urdu, Urdu yeah. in the show, like, did you have to pull strings for that? Or like, did, was Disney just okay with it? Because <laughs> like, I, I want more Urdu. Like I, I, this entire episode could be in Urdu and I would be happy because like, it was so good. Like Urdu is such a romantic language. And like, when you see Fawad Khan, a man who looked like that, reading poetry, I don't care what world or universe or dimension you're in, you're staying. You're like, I'm going to have mm -hmm. his babies. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. <laughs> I had to drink water here for you guys a reason. Are crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. That poetry, I was like, yeah, I would stay too. I should. <laughs> I, lo I love it. And it was like it Rumi. Was, yeah. I think the poetry he was uh, quoting was Rumi, actually, you, right? I mean, is, yeah. is, no, is any show complete love without it. a Rumi reference? Exactly. Like, we have to get, <laughs> get a little Rumi in definitely, there. Definitely not. <laughs> No, I am curious, like, did you actually have to pull strings to get Urdu in, like, Disney Plus? Like, or is that just something everyone just accepted? They're like, cool, we're doing it. No, no, we, they, there was a really clear, because we had already established pre precedence through, like, Shang-Chi and other kind of movies. So mm. there wasn't a real debate over the language piece. Um, what there was um, work that I had to do was around actually making it accessible to people in Pakistan. So um, Disney Plus is not accessible oh, yeah. in Pakistan right now. And so in order, I really wanted to make sure, and I was talking to Sana about this, I really wanted to make sure that um, people, especially young girls in Pakistan, had access to the movie, to the series. I felt like it's really like such a powerful mm -hmm. story. And um, so we were able to secure a limited theatrical release, which was really just a, we're not making money off of that. It's just the company's way to give back um, to the community. Thank and you so, so much and for the fans. Thank that you so that was really incredible. But you need to recommend to people to buy tickets in Pakistan and also to watch the show on Disney Plus because the numbers are not as strong as we want them. So go do the things. Yo. <laughs> Everyone listening, tell your friends yeah. right now. Go watch it and go watch it on day one. So the finale coming up next Wednesday. Well, in fact, watch episode five today. It's still the same has, day. Like, like, and then finale next Wednesday, it's right? Such a great Make sure show, you watch it the it moment it drops. It has so many things going against it, right? Number one is all the, the racist and misogynist people who don't want to watch a woman of color. That definitely needs to be in the conversation. But then it also came out around the same time as uh, Obi-Wan, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, Stranger Things and um, Umbrella Academy dropped. Kenobi. And now this yeah. week, Thor. Love and Thunder just drops. It's it's tough, man. It's tough for this show, and it's such a good show. And I don't think it's getting enough credit because it has such an yeah. uphill battle. Yeah. I, the other thing is, is um, usually most um of these series are built around a hero that has already been introduced to a mainstream right. audience through a major film. Um, Moon Knight being the exception, but Oscar. Well, that Isaac has Oscar is, Isaac. Yeah. Is such a star, right? And he had yeah. been kind of introduced to the world through Star Wars. And and so because of that, it was less of an issue, but um, she's really kind of um, facing an uphill battle. So I think, you know, as she starts to pop up in other places in the MCU, I think you'll actually start to see a lift on the series overall. Um, and I feel like it's going to be one of those things that is just so beautifully done. And it's so um, such a meaningful piece of culture that I think it's going to live on in so many different ways. So. Yeah. yeah oh yeah no for sure and also i i think it has really good numbers when it comes to like black and asian households i think it i think they said it was doing good for that so it's grabbing a new demographic and listen i think people underestimate how much buying power 12 year old girls have man they, they'll buy they'll buy miss marvel toys trust me <laughs> they'll, they'll buy them like you, you yeah, see the question... okay good <laughs> question for you guys um 
since I this is my first time on the show and I haven't heard the other episodes. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Don't don't beat me up. It's all right. Sorry. <laughs> But um, what I would love to know, did you all expect it to be what, what it is? No, no. It actually blew my expectations away. Like, I no. did not think it was going to be better than Moon Knight. I didn't think it was going to be better than WandaVision. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to give us the bare minimum. Um, but it blew me away. And the thing is, like, like, I don't know. It's because it's for me. That's what it feels like. It's like a love letter to South Asians. Like, there's, like if you take yeah. out the superhero part of this show, that'll even make it better. Like it won't even make it worse. Like that that'll literally make the show better cuz like there's so much like great storytelling, the family, the characters, the history, the references, the cultural stuff. Like all of that is what makes the show. And I did not know they were going to put that much thought and effort to it. I thought it was just going to be a superhero show, sprinkle a little uh, Pakistani jokes and they're done. But no, it's the opposite. It's a Pakistani show with a little superhero sprinkled in and I love that. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be the Marvel formula, cause like all of like Phase One yeah. through Three, right? It was very formulaic. I'll be very honest, right? You had a couple of big name actors. They throw a couple of quips here, serious fighting in each movie, a few more quips at the end. Everybody goes home happy, right? I thought it was gonna be that, and I thought it was gonna be even more cartoonish, like the pop was the texting. I thought like that would be the whole thing, right? Like, but they just did it very artfully, and it's not anything of what I expected. It's just been more. It's uh helped me yeah. like it's it's cathartic like just seeing all of this and it's like oh my god this is beautiful and every wednesday night 3 a.m i am up watching this because i'm so hyped for it the only issue i have with this show is that six episodes is not enough yes that's, what is up with that yeah that's the only issue i have with the show because there we, we need like at least two more episodes of this to to be really fulfilled because like there's so much that I, like i need to see i, I don't bro I, I don't want this family to go away more? yet i want six seasons in a movie okay i know well we are getting a movie <laughs> yeah you're, you're you're trying to you're trying to push uh you're trying to push the netflix like season four where there's like feature films <laughs> mm -hmm. as, part of the, mm -hmm. as part of the series um i was gonna say it's for now the way that we're doing episodic content which is what we call our limited series um is six episodes so you see right. that with Obi Wan, you see that with all of the previous Marvel series. It's all six series, uh, six episodes. But that's why you guys need to tell people to watch the show and to talk about it and to encourage others to talk about it. Because if it's not popular, because it's not, it yeah. doesn't catch. Um, then this might be the yeah. end of the season. But yes, she will be showing up in at least one movie. Oh, so. we we need yeah. more than one. Perfect. We need more than one. We need her in the Young Avengers. We need her in like everything. Like, <laughs> it's so cool, man. Like she she. First of all, you can't waste someone like Iman Vellani. Like, she is ripped from the pages. Like, that is the character. <laughs> like, you, you, we have to see more of that. Like, it's insane. I know. She's literally Kamala. It's, it's, it's amazing. Crazy. I'm very impressed y'all found her. She was perfect for the role. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, she was literally, that's the only thing that she's really yeah, ever she's even done, um, yeah. tried out for. That's, yeah. Yeah. So, and I think she's an amazing actress. No. Which is yeah. amazing. Telling Neebs at no. the premiere, like they didn't find uh, an actress to play Kamala Khan. They found Kamala Khan. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I know, right? For sure, man. That's, but the, again, that's where you're just like, there's some Budaka <laughs> in this whole situation. Mm -hmm. Because I, let me tell you, with Aladdin, we did a worldwide search and we still ended up with not finding exactly the right people. I think. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow, man. But no, I, I think we got lucky here. And like, I don't know, man. Iman is so talented. And like, even in our interviews, like, it's, it, it's one thing to find somebody who does like a good job on screen, but someone who does good press and media, like, she's killing oh, yeah. it. Like, Saying all the sound bites, the corporate words that you need. <laughs> even people who don't like the show love Iman. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. So I, I love that. That's really, really cool. Um, but let's talk about a little bit about the partition scene because that was heavy. That is super heavy, and and like I could not watch it all the way through. I had to pause it because it was a lot. It was a lot. Did you cry too? What? Listen, Did you cry too? Listen, man, my eyes were working out, so they got a little sweaty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, okay, like when when Aisha sees uh, Kamala and she thinks he's Sana, and then Sana says, "Oh, I'm I'm not." But she knows that she's like family. She has this like 
calm go over her like she knows. It's so freaking <laughs> so good, man. I can't even talk about it. It's so good. Like I can't even tell how good that that scene was. Cause like for your ancestor who went through the partition to die knowing that whatever they did was okay, that it was worth it, that you're okay, that you made it. Bro, like mm-hmm. Can't. Yeah. Honey, you seem like you're a little emotional there. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But I was working out, my eyes were sweaty. I, I, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's really hard to to watch a scene like that and know that like mm-hmm. there are family members of yours that died and have no idea whether you made it or not. Like it's crazy. Right. It's there are family members now who would like, you know, like our parents, they moved across the world. A journey that may even be similar, right? going through everything not knowing what's gonna happen and then you know we're here thriving because of it so you know that scene hit a lot harder than just it being about the partition i think uh we all can relate to it there's a very famous quote that says uh we are our ancestors wildest dream and like that's the scene yeah that's the scene Mm -hmm. oh i love that i love that yeah i think um for me, I, if you come from a multi-generational family, I think it's such an incredible opportunity to watch. It, you know, this is the first um, thing that I've ever watched, Marvel thing that I've ever watched with my amma, my grandma. And just to like, you know, she's from Pakistan. And to be able to just, you know, kind of thank her for the sacrifices. And I know that, you know, that's a lot of the elders, you know, like really being able to thank them for what they've done and, um, and to recognize what they've been through. I remember, um, not to make this political, but I remember when Trump was elected president and we were really nervous. Yeah. Right. And I think a lot of people were scared. Get political. Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's going to happen? And, um, I remember I, me and my family actually left for Umrah a couple of days after um, he got elected because we had already planned um, a trip. And so my little sister came downstairs and it was just her and my grandmother at home. And she told my grandmother, she was like, I'm really nervous. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. And my grandmother was like, I've lived through four wars, four wars. You're going to be fine. <laughs> and it was just that like, kind of like, you know, like the like. D- don't worry about it. Yeah. Like what we've lived through is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, that's true, man. My parents say stuff like that all the time. It's really cool, man. And and speaking of parents, man, um, I love the story of the grandmother and Kamala's mom, Ikman, because that's the heart of the story. Like people don't realize, like Marvel literally tricked everybody into watching a show about <laughs> I know. generational trauma. It's gonna be about superheroes. <laughs> like, like <laughs> it's so good. And you see, like their relationship and how, like, you know. One, like the way, um, and we actually had a psychologist on our show last episode. Go watch our last episode if you watch one episode. It's about the partition. We had a, a psychologist who is doing her dissertation on intergenerational trauma through the partition. Like it was the perfect episode. Mm-hmm. And she talked about how, yeah. how uh, if you go through trauma, trauma messes with your brain in a temporal fashion. So like Sana on this show still thinks of like her home as being India, even though she was only three years old when she was there and she lived there for 60 years because that's how trauma works. And like the science that they put behind that was was so good. And then we can see it relates to how she treated Maniba by not being, holding her too tight. And then Maniba doing the opposite and not ho- holding Kamala too tight. Like, like it was so well done, like fantastic storytelling and fantastic character development. And you could see like, out of it took five episodes for the story to come together it wasn't rushed Mm -hmm. it was pretty like well done like it was like one more episode and it would have been too much it was the perfect time to wrap up this family interracial drama and and before we even started this episode we said the word healing if that scene wasn't healing i don't know what is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you for all that you do oh thank you yeah my my job just for folks who might not know is um I lead representation and inclusion strategies for the Walt Disney Studios, which is basically um, all movies and episodic content. So including Marvel, Lucas, uh, which is Star Wars and other things, but Star Wars. <laughs> you love Star Pixar. Wars. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my God. I, I didn't. Uh, yeah. I mean, who doesn't love Star Wars? People that don't have good taste. Um, <laughs> there you go. There's a lightsaber. <laughs> Um, we, it, but it includes Pixar, Walt Disney Animation, 20th Century, Searchlight, um, and Disney theatrical 
group of Disney Live Action. So it's, it's a huge number. We're currently working on 220 titles um, across wow. all of our brands wow. and really looking at representation across all of them. So it's a it's a huge kind of task. And um, but the reason why I took the role was because the ability to have an impact on what tens of millions, hundreds of millions, literally billions of people see every year is really important. And especially as Muslims, we know that the representation of our community has been really horrible and what the, imp yeah. the implications of what that means, right? For people mm -hmm. individually, but then also for communities and societies in the world. And so I've just, I think I feel a very strong responsibility that we ensure that there's proper representation for everyone. So what can we do, like just on a day-to-day -day basis to make a small change? When it comes to Miss Marvel specifically, is really trying to. I I love what you guys are doing because you're taking a um, a piece of culture and then you're creating more culture from it. You're you're doing a cultural critique, right? You're talking yeah. about it. You're sharing yeah. it with other people. You're creating a community around it, and we need more of that. And we need more of that for our stories because yeah. it it is us that makes our stories powerful and popular. We have to advocate for them, you know, yeah. and so. I, if you look at Black Panther and the and the kind of phenomenon that was that was yeah. or mm -hmm. Shang Chi and the phenomenon that was that was led by communities who really resonated with that story and who were like we're gonna look at the costumes we're gonna talk about this we're gonna talk about that and what does it mean you know and like literally imagining like Afrofuturism different worlds right different futures so like. I think it's really important to also engage with these pieces of culture and use them as a way for education for learning for fun yeah. all of the things. Yeah. yeah, no, I totally agree with you. That's exactly what I do on my TikTok. In fact, I'm going viral today because I was the first person who figured out that her new symbol is actually the cough in the K in her letter. I was the person <laughs> who figured that out. And I'm, everyone's tweeting me today. It's like, you were right, you're right. And it was really cool because nobody realized that because nobody speaks the language and nobody knows that in Arabic you can write the left. It's something only a Pakistani or a Muslim person would recognize. And I was the first person to recognize it and everyone's telling me that it is. So like this kind of stuff, it goes viral because like it's exciting and like people learn about their cultures. So it's cool. And you mentioned like uh, Star Wars earlier. Me and Jazz literally started a podcast because we had one thing that we wanted to talk about. And that was, are the Mandalorians hijabis? That was our first <laughs> podcast. We had an entire podcast true. on the Mandalorians are hijabis, and we had like a whole thing to prove that they were, and that's where our podcast took off. So it's it's basically like yeah, everything you're saying is what we're all about, and and that's what we do on my TikTok. That's what I do on the podcast, um, and that's what we'll continue to do because like you know, like I said, these voices need to be out there. Doesn't matter how big they are, they need to be there. The only thing is, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I do, I am excited to finally see her costume. That's probably the next thing that I'm really excited about, because I think she gets the vest from uh, Walid. She, she, she got the scarf from uh, Kareem, and then the necklace uh, and the symbol is probably going to be from her mom, and she got the mask from Bruno. So like, I love that they're tying in, that her costume and her superheroism is tied not only to, like, her culture, but like her family and friends. And it's such a great way to make it a part of her story. It makes it like Kamala Khan is literally interchangeable from any other like superhero. She has to be a Muslim Pakistani girl and nothing can change that because it's so intricately woven into her origins. And I love that this show went out of its way to make sure everybody knows that. And it's cool. Like for example, the necklace, when little girls wear that necklace, they're not wearing a Miss Marvel necklace. They're wearing a necklace that they could identify as their culture, as their identity, as their history, because it's their letter. It's their like Arabic letter, right? Like it's a big deal to a lot of people to to be able to claim this. Not something that was given to us, but something that we earn. And that's what this show feels like. It feels like something we earn. They did one it right. The, <laughs> one of the things I have to say is um I feel like you watch the first three episodes and you're like, oh, this is what this show is about. It's very like Spider-Man-esque, like origin story, right? Like yeah, that yeah. type of thing. And then it's and then you go to episodes four through six and you're like, wait, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you tricked us into learning. I know. I know. It just gets so deep, so heavy. I mean, it's <laughs> awesome. I think I think the last three episodes are really, really powerful and really meaningful. Wow. So. No, yeah. I'm I am really looking forward to it. The worst part is like cuz like when when you have communities like the the black community and the Asian community, 
our community, unfortunately, there's a lot of pushback. There's a lot of like really strict Muslims that don't want to see a woman being for, uh, without a hijab, being a superhero. Like they nitpick at so many things. Like I watched this mm-hmm. episode and I was like, son of a, you got to chill with the jinn mentioning and the magic mentioning, man. There's, mm-hmm. there's Muslims around you. No wonder Muneeva left. <laughs> <laughs> I'd leave too if I had a grandmother telling everybody we're jinns and we don't magic. I would leave too, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious uh wait wait for the finale okay. wait for okay. the finale um i was gonna say i i think you know we have some voices within our community that are critical and look it's important that we're not monolithic and that mm-hmm. we are critical yeah. and that we're constantly holding ourselves to a higher standard so i think that's important and what i will also say that i think is actually the bigger factor here is that we've had well over two decades where people have become used to and desensitized almost to the fact that Muslims are always misrepresented or erased and that we're always vilified. And so I think the skepticism and the way that people have checked out, right? Like they don't believe that they could have meaningful representation. And I think there's people that still had hope that watched that were moved Mm -hmm. by it. And there's a lot of people, those people, I think there's a huge group of people that are still like, no, 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 no. it has to be, it can't be good. A lot of the criticism I saw was from people who hadn't even watched it. Wow. (laughs) You know? I I see that too. I would say the majority of criticism because it's people who are just like, we already know what this means. We already know, we're, or we watched episode one, and that's it. And we already oh, know what's going to no. happen. We already know there's an agenda here. They're going to try to do this. They're going to try to do that, yeah. right? Like, I think, I think, um, and that's like, there's a history of trauma, and there's a history of, like, a real history of misrepresentation, yeah. right? And I see this with other, I work with um, lots of communities that have been marginalized, and I think that um, it's true of other communities as well. Is like, we don't want to believe that we can have something yeah. like this because we don't want to be hurt again because we've been through so many experiences where we were harmfully represented. Yeah. And, the, and we personally felt the ramifications of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, it makes total sense. And uh, you're right on when you're saying majority of the people who are the most critical of it have not even seen it. Because I've had- Yeah, to, there's like, no way. Because <laughs> I've, I've had to find people who were like, oh, she likes pork. And I was like, where does she like pork? She, and they're like, the little slot that she has, people think that's a pig. And I'm just like- Wow. <laughs> wow. Like, do you need zoology classes? Like, I'm like, do, a sloth and, and a pig are not the same thing, sir. Not even close. <laughs> yes. Like, it, they, they, oh say the weir- they say the weirdest stuff, right? And, and, and it's one of the things where I'm like, give it a chance, watch it, and then critique it. And also, don't throw away the whole show because it's one thing you don't like. There's so much good in this show. You know, just because there's like one thing that you're you don't like or you don't agree with doesn't mean you have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's a great mm-hmm. show. It's super Agreed. representative. It humanizes us more than any show that's ever done so. And the other shows that you have watched, we're always related to war. And this actually affects real life policies and politics because when you see the way people treated Ukraine to compare to the way people treated Syria. What's the difference? Yeah. Right? What's the oh, difference? this is not a an area traditionally known to have war. This is a relatively civil area. I was like, I, I want to say some things at that point. <laughs> this shouldn't happen here. Those are the kind of things I had you some hear, right? Very particular words. <laughs> yeah, and and I think people need to know like these kinds of shows do humanize us, uh, mm-hmm. and they make us feel represented, and they empower us and give us voices and. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for being a part of this team. Thank you so much to Disney and uh, everyone else. Disney's actually been really good. With the, the other mm-hmm. thing that came out called American Eve, which I thought was really, really good. And then there's a – was it? My team. Oh, that was your team? Really? You guys did that? Launchpad, I believe. Awesome. Launchpad is part of my team. So Mahina Ibrahim, my director. I love that. She wrote, she American Eve Launchpad. was was so cute. It was really great. And there's another one, Royal Detective. I forgot her name. Mira, Royal Detective. Mira. Yeah, they had a whole episode on Eve, which was like fantastic. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. My my company advised on that. Yeah, yeah for about a year this and a half. Is, you guys yeah. are not Netflix. Yeah. You guys have your shit together, and it's probably because of you. <laughs> mm-hmm. <It's> probably <laughs> right. Shout out to you, it's, Maria, changing the world. It's a, no, there's a, uh, thank you, but no, I th- I think that it, we make the joke, uh, the M- Muslims in Hollywood, that you know we've been working in the industry. We make the joke that like Disney basically hired every Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. If you look at yeah. 
Lena, Lena Khan, she's like the director of Flora and Ulysses. Um, you look at uh, even Rami. Yeah. Rami mm-hmm. is the Rami, right? We own Hulu. Oh, yeah, you do. Which is where. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, it's it's funny. It's like all the major Muslim projects are basically Disney projects. And so, yeah, it's, um, I mean, we are also the largest media company in the world. So, you know, yeah. whatever. But I think, I think, um it's it's uh i'm excited for the potential and the possibility and i think like the main thing is like we have to build more cultural power as a community we have to like we're starting to have the right artists we're starting to have the right writers directors producers like people in the industry slowly right and but we need the consumers we need the audiences to say this this matters to us you know so i think without that i think it's going to be hard but i think we're just at the beginning of our journey and i'm so excited to see where we land yeah we're gonna do it we're gonna well, do it. Thank you so much for being here. We really, really appreciate it. We know you have a lot of busy stuff to do, and you probably <laughs> have stuff way more important than talking to two bozos like us. <laughs> 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 but no, we really appreciate you. It was wonderful being on with both of you. It just it like you know warms yeah. my heart to like we we're often in the corporate meetings. You know what I mean? So I don't get to have a conversation with people who are like, "This is what this meant to me." So I appreciate you both, and thank no, you for it, the work that you all do. It's really meaningful. It's important. No, no problem, man. We we appreciate it. If we if we can just you guys are, you know, doing everything and all we're doing is like pushing it in front of people. That's 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 the most we can do. Um necessary. Thank you again for coming on. We know you have Thank stuff you to so do. Much. And uh if you ever want to come back on our show, definitely, definitely hit us up. We might hit you up because I if Disney ever has another project where there's uh, some Muslim representation, we we might want to talk to you about it again. So let us know. I will cancel everything on my schedule to come talk to you again. This is awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. And uh, send me the podcast information so I can listen to the previous episodes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, until then, next, guy, next time, guys. Salam, nerds.